Welcome. Welcome, my brothers and sisters. A couple of weeks ago, Pastor Alfredo read from the Gospel according to Luke. It was Luke 24, verses 13 through 35. The road to Emmaus. And after he read it, and after the service, I read it again, and I read it again. And the words of a old gospel hymn came to me. Walk with Jesus each and every day. Talk with Jesus all along the way. Trust in Jesus. He'll make your life complete. He's wonderful, wonderful. My Lord is wonderful. And as they continued their journey, he was going to continue on and, and they asked him to, to stay with them. And he did. Do you remember what happened next? My brothers and sisters, welcome to the table of the Lord. Remember, his table is big enough for us all. So come around the table. Come and take your place. It was on the night he was betrayed. He took bread. He blessed it. He broke it. He gave it to his disciples and he said, take and eat. This is my body. Then he took the cup. He blessed it. He gave it to his disciples and he said, take and drink. For this is my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant that will be shed for you and for all so that sins may be forgiven. So as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we do so in remembrance of him. At this time, let us eat. and let us drink. Dear Lord, as we walk our journey, speak to us. Be with us, Lord, as we go from day to day proclaiming your words from our hearts and our souls. 
We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Good morning, New Beginnings Christian Community Church family and friends. My name is Pastor Alfredo Peña, and we are excited that you are joining us this morning. I want to welcome you to our Sunday service. Today is a special Sunday as we are celebrating Mother's Day. So I want to say Happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. If you are close to your mom right now, I want you to give her a hug and give her a kiss and tell her you love her. And uh, for those of us whose moms are already in heaven, what better way to honor them and celebrate them than being together in a time of worship and listening to God's Word. So Happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. Today we have a great and encouraging message. Um, so the sermon title for my message today is Do Not Let Your Hearts Be Troubled. And the scripture reading is in the book of John, chapter 14, verses 1 through 14. Let us pray. Most living and loving God, we thank you for this day. We thank you, God, for this special Sunday as we celebrate, God, the beautiful gift that you give us all, God, the gift of a mother. And Father God, we just lift up our moms this morning, God. We just ask that, that you bless them, God, that you continue to guide them, that you continue to fill their, their days and their lives, God, of joy and, and peace and just um, happiness, God, uh, for being such um, awesome instruments, God, of your love. Um, we ask, Holy God, that you prepare us this morning. We ask that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O God, our Lord, our rock and our Redeemer. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. The scripture reading again is in the book of John, chapter 14, verses 1 through 14. And it says this in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I had been among you such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Just a little bit of background on this scripture. Jesus here is with his disciples, and he has said and done some things that were troubling for them. Um, this takes place in the upper room. This is um, after having the last, as we know, as the Last Supper. And, and the first thing that Jesus does that, that kind of troubles them is that he washes his, their feet. And so, so they, don't, they don't know how to respond to that because it doesn't make any sense. For them, they should have been washing Jesus' feet, not Jesus wash theirs. And so this was very troubling for them. And, and Jesus is saying, no, I must do this. And he's also showing us, them and us at this point, that this is also the, the life and the attitude of being a servant that we should observe. And then so they had trouble kind of grasping that. Um, he also will t tells them at this point that one of them is going to betray them. Now, this was a close-knit group that had been together. They had been following Jesus. They had been living together. And, and for Jesus to tell them, one of you is going to betray them, this was very troubling for them. 
And then he tells Peter, you will deny me three times. And so if we know the story of Peter, Peter is probably thinking, "How? no, there's no way I'm willing to give up my life for you. Why would you think that I will deny you? And then he talks about leaving them. Jesus says, I must go. And, and, and they want to go with him, and he says, you can't go with me. And so this was very troubling for them. And they were, they were having a hard time understanding all that was going on. And then this is where the scripture today starts, and Jesus tells them, do not let your hearts be troubled. Oh, imagine how they must have felt when they hear all these things. All this is happening um, you know, pretty quickly, and Jesus tells them, oh, but, but, but wait, do not let your hearts be troubled. I think many of us um, can probably relate um, to that statement, uh, 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 the response to the statement, I should say, that, that when Jesus said that, they must have gone, um, yeah, how can that be? And we're going to talk about that today. But first let me ask a question, and, and since this is a virtual service, uh, and I don't get to see the responses, I'm thinking that this is probably going to be the time that I ask a question that I'm going to get the most sincere responses. But how many of us have um, a comfort food or, or tend to go to food for comfort? Those of you that have been members of New Beginnings for a while, you know what my comfort food is, right? Cheesecake. Um, and, and some of you might, might have other things that, that we go to for comfort. You know, to some it's, it's food, to some it's specific, you know, me is cheesecake. But you know, truth be told, when a moment of, of craziness and a moment of, of worries and when I'm about to panic, I, I'll take any, any food. I, I tend to go to food. But some people tend to go to other things. Some people tend to go to exercise. Um, some people tend to go to alcohol. There, there's a lot of things that we do um, that, we, that we seek for comfort. And, and I think the question that, that maybe we should ask is why? If we serve a God of all comfort. Why are we going to these things for comfort then? <clears throat> and, and one could argue, well, they work for a little bit. And, and that's true. Maybe for a moment there they make us forget certain things, but at the end of the day, <clears throat> we feel worse. We, we, we still, the issue is still there. It, nothing's changed. The situation is still happening. That whatever scared me, whatever had me worried, whatever had me anxious, that's still there. That hasn't gone away. <clears throat> Except now, I feel worse because I broke my diet. Um, I'm sore because I overdid it on the exercising, perhaps. Or maybe just feel like a failure because we fell off the bandwagon. So today's message is really important because the reality is we all have that place that we go to for comfort that is not necessarily Jesus. And so this message is for all of us. Get your notes ready. Um, today we're going to cover three life application points. And and uh, I'm also excited because um, we had our Zoom connection this week and, and it was great to be able to see um, the faces uh, of our church members and our family and our friends. And, and we're excited because we're now going to start having our Bible studies, um, virtual Bible studies via Zoom. So, and this is not limited to just members of the church. So, um, you know, come to our website uh, and, and we'll be able to give you additional information about Bible study. But, but today's um, message, um, it breaks it down in three life application points. And the first one is the antidote to a troubled heart is belief. The antidote to a troubled heart is belief. Now, we're going to have to break that down a little bit because when we, when we talk about belief, I think sometimes we might not fully understand what that means. And, and I want us to drill down to fully understand the biblical meaning of it. Uh, because we can, we can take the modern understanding, for example, of belief and, and, and think of it as, as hope or speculation maybe you know I hope I can make it by five o'clock I hope I can I can finish this and 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 that's sometimes our, our interpretation of belief others might think of it as an intellectual acid you know um, acid there, there's there's information so so this since the information is, is facts is true then then this must be 
true as well. Um, an example of that is, you know, um, it's cold outside. And, and how do I know that it's cold outside? It's because the temperature is 40 degrees. So that makes it cold. In South Texas, maybe we might say it is hot outside. And then how do we know that to be true is because the temperature says it's 100 degrees. And so just because there are certain facts um, that support it, um, we consider it as true. And, and, and that, again, is, is another way to, to describe belief. But, but that's not what we're talking about here. When we're talking about when Jesus is saying, you know, do not let your hearts be troubled, believe in God and believe also in me, is he's telling us specifically to believe in God, to trust, to, to believe, to, to have faith, to, to have confidence. In fact, that is one of the definitions. Uh, when we talk about believe in biblical terms is to have faith. It's a confident attitude. It says one must accept or personally appropriate them as being true. That we're not merely accepting as true that he died and arose, but we're acknowledging that he did it for us. So when we talk about believe is, is who do we believe in? And that is in, in God. And then what do we believe about God is that his word and his truth. Trust who? God. In what? In his word and his truth. So for those of us that are dealing with, with things that, that, that just make us anxious, then, then this message is very important. The antidote to that is not comfort food, it's not um, exercise, it's not drinking. It is to trust in God and trust in his word. Let's break down troubled heart for a little bit too, because I think that's important. Here troubled it is the Greek word taras. Literally, it means to agitate, to stir up trouble. Metaphorically, it means to cause inward commotion, to take away calmness of mind. It means to disquiet, to make restless, to strike one's spirit with fear and dread, to render anxious or distressed. This is important because, because sometimes when we hear these scriptures and when we hear these messages, we say, yeah, you know, I hear you, but man, my situation is so much deeper than that. I understand what the disciples were going through, but mine is just, it's different. Mine is because it is personal, because it's ours. And so, so I give you this definition so that we can understand that this is deeper than just something that's worrying us for a little bit. This is, this is deeper than that. And it reminds us of the previous scriptures as we talked about Thomas and we talked about Cleopas. And, and it was not just an issue, an issue of intellect, it was an issue of the heart. And, and here Jesus specifically said, do not let your hearts be troubled. So this is more than just something that worries us. This is something that's deeper. This is something that's in our hearts. and and. If we're going to break down what believe means and we're going to break down what troubled heart means, then here's another question that I think we need to ask is what's causing our hearts to be troubled? See, I know, I know the stories and I, and I know some of you are right in the middle of, of a diagnosis, are right in the middle of a treatment. And you might, you might be in a position to say, I don't know what that's going to look like. Some of you might be in a position where, you know, your, your situation is difficult, you're out of a job and, and you've applied for all these things and you do not know what tomorrow looks like. To some, it could be a relationship, you know, our relationship is just, it doesn't seem to get better and we're trying all these different things and, and we're at a place where, where we just don't know what's going to happen. Moms, to some of you, it could be your children. It could be that, that you have been praying for your children and, and, and there are some things happening in their lives that, that are just difficult and that you wish you could just, you could just make it all go away, but you can't. And, and so your situation, what worries you, what steals uh, your hope and your joy and what, what robs you uh, of, of your peaceful nights, what, what keeps you awake at night is deeper. And, and we get that. 
And, and it is important that you and I understand what it is that, that is causing us to have this heartache. So we understand now what belief means. We understand what troubled heart means. And we understand that it is personal. And that we need to be able to point out, call what it is that's giving our hearts um, that trouble. Because there's good news to this message. When Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled, it's because I am um, the one that's, that, is, that is giving you the antidote, and that is to believe in God, to believe in his word. And here's life application point number two. When Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled, because I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. Now, these three statements are, are a series in, uh, on their own. I mean, we could be here for weeks breaking down these scriptures. So, so it's, it's kind of hard to, to touch all of them in, in just a few minutes. But, but it is important because this is what Jesus says. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And this is the antidote. It is believe in my word and believe in me. Believe in God. And if you believe in God, you believe in me. And, and I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. So, so let's break this down a little bit as well. The way. I am the way. And this is where it's a little difficult for us because we live in a time in where we like to make our own way. Where, where we don't necessarily like people to tell us what to do or how to do it. We want to be able to do that on our own. And, and I think that's very visible right now as you see people that are, 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 are panicking and protesting because they have to wear a mask. Is something that is good for them. It is for their own health. It's for their own good. But yet, because I think that they're being told to do it, they feel like they have to protest. Like, like no, I can't do it. And, you know, we might look at them and we might criticize and we might say, you know, that's that's silly, or maybe you're, yeah, using another word. But but before we start judging, let's look at ourselves and and wonder how many times has that been our reaction spiritually. Or even in life, you know, um, I used to hear uh, people say, you know, learn from other people's mistakes. And I would say, well, you know what? I'm ready to make my own mistakes. <laughs> that is pretty silly. Uh, thank God I'm, I'm in a place um, where, and, and a lot of people, I hope, are in a place of, of maturity where it is a good thing to learn from other people's mistakes. And here, Jesus is saying, I am the way. And, and, and you don't have to make your own way. I've already defined that path for you. And, and, I, and I can tell you that this is going to take you in the right direction and there is no need for you to try to make your own way. But it's, it's almost in our DNA, guys, especially for us. You know, how many times have we bought something and it comes with instructions and we do not feel that we need to use the instructions? I've done it. You know, it, it comes with that little piece of paper and we just put it aside and, and we um, try to get this done on our own. And, and, and listen, we can even make it look pretty close to what it was supposed to be. And, and we can even justify it. We can say, you know what, I didn't need the instructions. I put it all together and guess what? I ended up with five extra screws. That's a good thing, man. I have some backup screws now if I need them. We can justify another way. You know, I, I put this together. It looks good, except the wheels don't turn. But you know what? Who wants this thing to roll away anyway? So, so this is a good security feature. <laughs> and, and I know many of us have gotten to situations where we did it our way, and it is wrong, and it doesn't look the way it was supposed to look, and it doesn't feel the way it's supposed to feel. But because of our sense of pride, we refuse to accept it, and we instead can even justify it. And Jesus is saying, I am the way. And, and, and I will show you the way. And, and my way is the way that's going to, to take you to that next place in your life. To, to, to be able to live out your calling. To live out your purpose. To be able to, to live. So, so today's message is stop trying to make your own way. How is that working out for you? And so today, Jesus is saying, I am the way. 
And this is a very controversial scripture because people look at the scripture and feel like, like it's being exclusive like it's excluding a lot of people. And the reality is, it is not. This is a very inclusive statement. Jesus is saying, my grace and my forgiveness is open for everyone, whosoever believes in me. There is no excluding people. This is open to everyone. Jesus is saying, I am the way. And it is a way that is big enough for everyone that accepts me to come through. It also says, I am the truth. And, 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 and this is important because the truth is that these promises are open for us. Yes, we live in a world, again, where truth is relative, where everybody gets to, to say, well, this is my truth, and, and this is my truth. And, and now we, we've been introduced to a term called alternative facts. And, and we have been exposed to, just because I say it enough times, uh, you know, people are, are going to think that this is true. And so, so when we talk about the word truth, um, I think it can be a little confusing. So let me, let me bring it home a little bit here, because here we're talking about Jesus saying, I am the truth. See, in the beginning of John it says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So here Jesus is saying, I'm not here to interpret what God is saying. I am God, I am the source. I am the author of this truth that we're talking about. And you know what? I don't care how much training and how much education we get. We don't get to argue with the author about what it is that he wrote. This in the Bible is, is red letters. It's Jesus saying, I am the way and I am the truth. And my truth is, is open for all of you. And, and his truth means that his promises are open to all of us. And it helps us look at life in, in a very different way. The truth of, of knowing that, that we have now an eternal perspective. That understanding that the situations that we might be going through right now, that those are just, those are temporary because this is not our home. To say, I am going to prepare a place for you that gives us that eternal perspective first of all it says for you it's personal it's for you individually you uniquely you you will have you and I will have a place an eternal perspective in where we will call home and, and, and it doesn't get more personal than that home home is where the father is you know it's, it's funny because I was thinking about this I have been in San Antonio now for 15 years originally from Brownsville. And do you know that when I talk about going to Brownsville, I say, I'm going home. Now, I haven't lived there for 15 years, but my father lives there. And so, so when I say I'm going to see my father, I say I'm going home. And then and, and it's where I grew up. It's where I have this, this amazing, awesome memories. And, and so, so when you think about what home means, now, some people might not have a good definition of home, and I, and I understand that. But to most people, when you think about home, is the place that you go back to, to, to rest, to just re-energize. You know, if you travel, whether it's business or whether it's pleasure, you can be in some amazing places and have some very successful times and meetings, but at the end of it all, it's always good to come home. And when I think about Jesus being the way, and I think about his words being truth, I think of that as belonging to me, as being personal, as being personal to you, and, and to be able to call um, heaven home. And he also says, I am the life. Scripture tells us um, in, in the last verse of John, these things were written so that you would believe and that you may have life. And what we're talking about here is a life of hope, a life of peace, a life of joy, a love, life of purpose, a life of meaning. And Christian, this is for you and for me today. See, this is not about promises in the future. This is about being able to have that life today, that life that we're inviting others to live. We are, that's, that's for us as well today. And let me tell you, when we find our purpose, life becomes sweeter. We've been talking 
um, this past few services about you know understanding what that life means a life of vitality a life of purpose to understand our why you know there's um, two important days in our lives the day we are born and the day we know why and 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 my question to you today is do you know why and, and some and to those of us that are Christians um, the day that we were born um, actually is two days the day that we are born into this life and the day that we are born into um, a life with Jesus so have you found your purpose are you living that life when you think about life is it is it a little sweeter it's not it's not about the situations that we're in it's about our eternal perspective. I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And again, this is not about being controversial. In fact, this is not about who cannot get in, but about who, who all can. It's not about leaving anybody out, but understanding all that, that is, is available to everyone. And, 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 and for those of us that have been hurt by the exclusivity um, interpretation of this. Today is the day that we let those things go and, and we hear we hear it loud and clear. I am the way, Jesus says. I am the truth and I am the life. Here's life application point number three. Jesus is God. Now this is interesting because they had not made the connection yet. They, they knew Jesus, they loved Jesus, they, they followed Jesus, they were with Jesus, but they had not made the connection yet. They're saying, show us the Father. And Jesus is saying, Philip, I've been around you all this time. Do you not know? And, and Christians, that is really important for us today because I believe that many of us Maybe haven't done that connection, haven't had made that connection yet. Yeah, you know, we believe in Jesus. Yes, we follow Jesus. Yes, we worship Jesus. But listen, have we made the connection that he is God? That he is our God? And if your answer is yes, which is would be the obvious answer if we're Christians, is, is that demonstrated in the way we live? Because if, if it is true that the, Jesus is our God, then, then that means that we're not making other things our God. Are there other things that are more important than spending time in worship? Are there things that are more important than, than spending time growing spiritually in our relationship with God? Are our careers more important? Our money, is money more important? Is a relationship more important? Is our own comfort more important? Scripture says that we shall have no other God. And so if the tr statement, if the answer is true, that Jesus is our God, that we've made that connection, then my question to us this morning is, is that representative in the way we live? Have you gotten to the place where, where it's not just as somebody that you learn about, it's not just somebody that you've been hearing about, it's not somebody that you know a lot of information about, but that He is. He is God. And, and, and church, today is, is, is an amazing, encouraging time for us because it is my prayer that we make that connection. That we stop looking at God as, as, as some figure that's way too far, way too, too big for me to, to be able to have a relationship with. Because that is why he gave us Jesus Christ. So that we can have that connection. So that we can have that relationship. So that, so that it can be real in our lives. And sometimes what prevents us from allowing God to be God is our own baggage. It really is. It's when we when we want to define God in, in, in a in a way that, that when we think of it is, is hurtful 
when we think of it as, as just authority or just wanting to punish us and not in a way of, of being a loving father, a protective father, one that loved us so much that he sent his son so that we might have that life. Have you made that connection today and allow him to be God? You know, one of the things that, that um, has been coming to uh, my spirit for this past few uh, weeks that we have been doing these virtual services is I really do think that this is an opportunity for us to, to be able to bring some people home. To those people that are struggling right now, you know, wondering, lost, because they, they just uh, think that they need to make their way or for some reason they were told that the Jesus way was not their way. For those people that, that fear has just overtaken them, that, that everything um, is just becoming, they become paralyzed because of fear and because of troubled hearts, then today you hear the antidote, you have the medicine, you have the, 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 the key that opens that life of, of being able to have peace that surpasses all understanding. Believe is the antidote to a troubled heart knowing that he is the way, the truth, and the life, and that all those promises are for us, and knowing that he is our God, the God of all comfort. So, so for those of you out there that are still running, that are lost, today we want to welcome you home. Let us pray. Well, living and loving God, we thank you for this message. We thank you, Holy God, because you are the antidote. Because we have everything that we need to be able to overcome these things, God. That, that yes, they're real, and yes, they are scary, and yes, they are real in our lives. But, but we also know, God, that you are real, and that you are bigger. And that whatever the situation is, Holy God, that that you are the antidote and that you are able to bring us peace, not like the world gives us, but peace that surpasses all understanding. We thank you because you are the way, which means that you don't just give us direction, God, and we let us figure it out on, your own, on our own, God, but that you will show us the way that you lived it for us, God. And that, that any time that we feel lost, we just have to go to your truth, which is your word, and to you and, and the way you lived. And, and that can be an amazing map for us, God. So for those of us, God, that, that have lost our way because we wanted to make our own way, God, thank you for allowing us to be able to, to get in the car with us and bring us home. Thank you because your truth, God, it brings comfort to our hearts and our spirit to know that these promises are for us. And thank you for the life of joy and peace and hope that you give us. And we thank you, God, because you are God. And for those of us that are struggling, for those that are struggling this morning, God, will you allow us to be still enough and know that you are God. We thank you for that amazing promise. We thank you for this encouraging message. We thank you again for the moms out there, God, and we just ask that you do a special, give them a special blessing today, God. And we also lift up all the prayer requests that will be submitted and that have been submitted. And we also thank you for the tithes and the offerings that we will receive today, God. And we ask that you bless them and that you multiply them, God. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning. We pray this service was of great blessing to you. Remember, go to our website, nb-ccc.org, and give us your comments. Let us know how you are doing. Send us your prayer requests so that we can continue to keep you in prayer. And this is also an opportunity for you to give your love offering and tithing. Again, thank you for joining us. Happy Mother's Day, and we will see you next Sunday.